Okay guys, here we go. We're gonna wrap up section 8.3. It's really not that much to do here. Okay, not that much to do. Um, we're finishing 8.3. Confidence intervals for sample means. One sample T intervals, very important you name the test. The first thing I want you to do is to go to CYU. CYU on page 511. CYU on page 511, okay? And I want you to do that right now, so pause the video, okay? This is, you couldn't ask it any better. I check your understanding. It's gonna check to see if you know what you're doing, okay? Can you do this on a quiz or a test? If you can do this problem, then you can probably do it on a quiz or a test. If you can't do this one, then you're not gonna be able to do it on a quiz or a test. So pause and do that. Okay, so we're back at it, checking those answers. Checking those answers, here we go. First one, define the parameter of interest. Population mean healing rate, okay? What inference method will you use? That's naming your test. Okay, I say test and you're saying, wait, this is an interval. Yep, you're right, but that's the terminology they use. And it's a one sample T interval for means, for means, okay? Random. It says it was random, okay? Normal, we don't know if the data is normal. And there's fewer than 30 observations, so they made a graph. They chose to make a histogram. The histogram doesn't show any severe skew or outliers, so therefore we can proceed and use the normal approximation. Independent, we have data on 18 newts, okay? That's less than or equal to 10% of all newts. Here is the do part. Your mean, 25.67, plus or minus 2.11, times 8.32 divided by the square root of 18, gives you an interval of 21.53 to 29.81. We are 95% confident that the interval from 21.53 to 29.81 micrometers per hour captures the true mean healing rate for newts. Okay, really good problem, a really good one. Okay, does just what it says, it checks your understanding. So, we're gonna wrap this up. This will only take a few minutes. Okay, I can tell you that. A few minutes to do this. Using T procedures wisely. The usefulness of the T procedures in practice depends on how strongly they're affected by the lack of normality. Procedures that are not strongly affected, when a condition for them is violated, is robust. Okay, so T procedures are robust, okay, against non-normality, which means you can use it, okay, except when you have outliers or strong skewness. So they like to tell you right away that N has to be greater than or equal to 30. And then when N isn't greater than or equal to 30, you look at a graph, okay, and you say, okay, is there strong skew? Are there outliers? If there's no strong skew and no outliers, then we can proceed. Okay, and that's pretty much what they talk about here. Use the T, if the sample size is less than 15, use the T procedures if the data appears close to normal. Roughly symmetric, single peak to no outliers. If the data isn't, is closely skewed, I don't know if that means closely skewed, but it's probably typed in wrong. Don't use T, okay? I think it probably means severely skewed. I don't know, let me, let me see if I can verify that. Closely skewed, I've never heard that term terminology. Um, strong skewness, maybe? No. Clearly skewed. Clearly, that's what it's supposed to be. Not close. Clearly skewed. Okay? But, here we go. Large samples, T procedures can be used even for skewed distributions as long as your sample size is greater than or equal to 30. Okay, so then they give you three problems. First one says, determine whether we can safely use a one sample T interval to estimate the population mean in each of the following settings. And you have to read them carefully. Carefully, right? To estimate the average GPA of students at your school, okay? 
GPA of students at your school, you randomly select 50 students from classes you take. Here's a history of their GPAs, histogram of their GPAs. So, can I, first let's look here. I can run next door real quick. Thank you, sorry. Yeah. Um, so we, when we look at this, I'm just going to pause this for a second. 